So you want to do damage. How much damage? Want to do this kind of damage? No, 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 no. This kind of damage. I'm talking about damage damage. Thick damage. Well, I'm going to teach you how to do this kind of damage. Hey friends, let's talk about escalations. What are escalations? Escalations is a new game mode in Dauntless. This new game mode has five stages of escalation, hence the name Escalations. Each stage is going to get progressively harder until you reach stage five, where you have my man, Malk. But we'll get to him later. The stages go in a very specific pattern. The pattern is on stage one and three, you have one behemoth. And on stages two and four, you have two behemoths. With stage five always being Malk, if you are able to reach him. To reach Malk, you will need a level 40 or higher, which means that you need to be going pretty fast in escalations. And after each stage, you get to pick up a power amp, which increases your own power to hopefully keep up with the power increases of escalations. That means by the time you get to Malk, you will have four power amps, which is hopefully going to be enough to take him down. So going down the list, we have plus six conduit. This is just something you should take on every single hunt. Grants the entire team plus 15 attack speed every single time you use your lantern hold ability. It's just a really good utility cell. I run plus six cunning for that additional crit chance and crit damage. This not only produces some ridiculous numbers, but it also helps synergize with some amps that I like to take as well. If you are struggling getting off hits with the axe, definitely pop in some wild frenzy in this slot instead. Plus six iceborne. This is going to be your never die cell. Plus six rage. Since we're running a low life build, that's just going to be 25% damage at all times. Plus six sharpened. This is going to be ensuring that we're breaking those pieces. It also allows us to hit those really crazy high damage numbers. Plus three discipline. This ensures that we're staying under that 50% HP for rage and iceborne. Plus three knockout king. This is only taken because we're using the scarring weapon. There's no real need for it. We're taking grim onslaught. If you play axe, you just take grim onslaught. It's better in like 98% of the situations that Axe finds itself in. So just take Grim Onslaught. We're taking Overcharge Cylinder here because it's very easy to get up to that four stacks and stay at that four stacks for the rest of the hunt very quickly in Escalations. I'll usually have four stacks before stage three, which is where Escalations really kind of starts getting hard. So for stage three, four, and five, I will have 75% damage just for the entire stages. We're of course taking Ember Mains Rapture. This will provide us much needed attack speed. You can run Drask if you want to do extra damage, but I'd much rather have the additional attack speed since we're not running anything else in this build except for Conduit to give us attack speed. Let's talk a little bit why this build is good for Escalations. This build excels at chopping off parts and staying alive while doing it. So one of the big things about Escalations is there's a lot of damage coming towards you and so you gotta survive. With only five flasks, for the entire run, you're going to want to do whatever it takes to try to take as little damage as possible. Most of my runs, I don't pop up flash for the entire run. This shows how tanky this build is. There's a couple reasons I want to be chopping off pieces in Escalations. Number one reason is I still need pieces from Malk, so I want to get as many pieces from him as possible to build the gear that I still need to build. And with the fact that we can't hunt Malk by himself, I want to make sure every time I face him, I'm chopping off as many pieces as possible. Another benefit of chopping off pieces is you get to ascend faster. So maybe if you're running a little bit slow, chopping off pieces will help you make sure that you're still ascending. This build has two main things to stay alive. It has Iceborne and it has Scarn Weapon. Iceborne, of course, reduces the damage you're taking by 30%, while also at the same time allowing you to heal back up. If you do actually take some health damage, you're able to heal it back up. The ace in the hold of this build is the Scarn Weapon for sure, though. Scarn Axe pumps out shield. You guys can actually see from my hits how much shield I'm actually getting from this Skarn weapon. It is actually disgusting how much shield I'm getting. 
running with this weapon pretty much makes you not care about damage at all you should still be dodging just so that you don't look bad but you don't even have to the mana shield i generate with this is the reason i run this weapon over koshai axe i will constantly have over a thousand shield with this build i've seen myself even get up to 200 stacks which is over 6,000 shield let's talk about the power amps you're going to want for this build the name of the game for power amps is damage so pick up anything that says it will give you damage we also want to focus on crit and crit damage this will provide the base to hit those huge damage numbers heroes calls an amp out to actually avoid it's another one of these defensive amps that we want to not pick up I just don't think this amp is worth picking up. Thunderous Mantle I've kind of gone back and forth on. Not spending stamina to sprint is very useful. However, the amount of time that you need to be sprinting to charge up the 1000 bonus damage is a little bit too much for me. And also the fact that you need to attack 3 seconds after it's charged to deal that 1000 damage. Seems actually pretty hard to do with Axe. But your results may vary with this one. Pack Tactics is actually a really good amp that I really like. While it doesn't do a lot for us in general, does a lot for the team as a whole. I usually pick this one up if I'm feeling like a good teammate. I'm not a big fan of the Eidolon amps. These ones will generally do a lot of DPS, but the part that you hit isn't chosen by you. So if you're looking to get specific parts, I wouldn't pick these up. I also don't do anything to Brodeise with those big Omega lol damage numbers. Critical Dominion I've only picked up a couple times, but I've always found it really hard to proc with a slow weapon like Axe. Whereas something nice and quick like the chain blades procs it really really quickly so i think this is a good amp in general just not for the axe squad goals is actually a really very interesting amp because not only does it make you stronger but it also makes every one of your teammates that has it stronger as well so i'll usually pick up squad goals as long as one or two other teammates actually have squad goals the only reason i have points and torrent shield is so that i can advance along the talent tree but i never take this amp Breath of Life is another amp that I take just so I can advance along the talent tree, but I also never pick this one up. Menor's gets in the same boat. I only have points in this so I can advance along the talent tree, but I never pick it up if I ever see it. Paragon's Blessing right in that average damage that we're looking for from damage amps. However, you lose this damage if you ever get hit, so it's actually quite risky. But I usually try to avoid this amp unless I'm feeling particularly safe. Bonds of Conflict I think is actually a really terrible amp. It's probably pretty good on the dual behemoth hunts. However, I'm making my build to fight Malk. 20% critical strike chance when a behemoth is enraged just really isn't that much. And I don't care about the lantern charge at all. The Malkarian sprite amps are actually okay. They provide 15 crit on demand with 15% movement speed. I'll pick them up if I'm really hurting for crit. But I also generally try to avoid these at all costs as well. Pack of Might is another really good amp that you want to pick up if you ever see it. It increases the damage you take on the next fight by 20%, but after that you take but after that you start doing 20% additional damage. Just right in that 20% additional damage mark that we want to be hitting with, with our amps. Thrill the Hunt is the best amp to get on the first round. If you see Thrill the Hunt on the first round, this is a guaranteed pick. Thrill the Hunt will provide 50% increased damage by the time you get to Melk. If you see Thrill the Hunt on stage 2, I would still pick it. It's 30% additional damage. You just don't get that Omega lol damage of 50%. And even on stage 3, I would still pick up Thrill the Hunt. It's still 20% additional damage, which is like the baseline of damage. Meaning, if you get an amp that does 20% damage, that's about average. Amps I'm looking for are Vitulent Impact. Vitulent Impact is an amazing damage amp. It increases the damage of your crits by 75% for just one behemoth. If you have two behemoths, it's actually 150% additional damage on each crit. Because this uh, amp works on both one and two behemoths, it's crazy good. It does so much damage. The only downside of this amp is you actually need to critically hit for it to become useful. Full Throttle is an amazing amp to get on the last stage. If it's the last stage, I will always pick Full Throttle. 30% chance to just critically strike is a huge amount of increase in damage. Look at the power is a little bit below average for me just because you have to be standing in it. But if you are able to make good use out of it, if you're good with your positioning, that's 30% increased damage for you and anybody else that is also good at positioning. So it's a pretty good amp. Duelist Precision 
This amp was made for Axe. Because Axe attacks so slow, each critical hit that does come out of this amp is going to be huge damage. You're also able to play around this amp by throwing your Q when it gets really high. Executioner is another decent amp. It's pretty much 25% increased damage for half the fight. It's a little bit below average for damage, but it's okay. If you see it and you don't have anything else good to pick, I, I pick it up. The big strategy with talents is you don't want to pick up amps that you don't want to see in your amp pool. By putting amps in your side of your amp pool, you're just decreasing the chance of getting the amp that you actually want. This was my very first solo mouth fight, so I was actually trying to get a false run here. So don't pay attention to me running around like an idiot just throwing my axe. Hope you guys enjoyed watching the run. By the way, guys, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. I'm going to put out some more videos aiming to teach you guys how to play Dauntless. If you guys do have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I do read every single comment. Or catch me on my stream. I stream Tuesday through Saturday, and I'm always willing to help you guys or answer any questions you guys might have.